Hello and welcome to the 16th, I think, the 16th tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. And in the last tutorial, uh, we were going over damaging, bullets damaging enemies and enemies damaging players. So, right now, our enemy still collided with uh, bullets even though he was dead and invisible. So, right now, we're going to fix that. So what we have to do is go into the bullet class and the update method, go to the collision if statement and actually go into the object class and in the collision in the collision method for only the one argument you want to put uh, where it says if o dot get type equals equals object dot get type. We're gonna put and o dot alive. So we just want to make sure he's alive. So that's that. Go ahead and test that. See if it works. There we go. You see it doesn't collide with bullets anymore. Okay, all is good. Okay, now let's have the player die when he loses health. So when he's his health went down. Or actually have him draw his health. How about that? First, so let's go into the draw method. We're just gonna go up here and try to find it. The draw. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw the health. It's gonna be below the reloading place, so it's gonna be it's gonna say health. And it's gonna have the amount of HP plus slash plus the maximum amount of HP so max HP there we go okay uh, and we want it in and just gonna create a new vector the X is going to be zero the Y is going to be uh, line spacing times two. So remember how we use the line spacing, which is basically just the height of the text. Uh, we're going to take that same variable and just multiply it by two. The reason being because we want two spaces below the top left corner. Oops. There we go. So let's go ahead and run this. See if it works. As you can see, our enemy is slowly eating away our health if we stand next to him. So if we let him stand next to us, see, look, it's going down by five every second. So that's good. That means it's working. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is have us die when our health goes to zero. So I'm just going to go to the update method and let's see right on the bottom after uh, the previous be before the previous keyboard and the after the rotation I'm just going to put uh, if HP is smaller than zero smaller or equal to zero then game dot exit so I don't think I can call that uh, just a second Okay, I'm just gonna s make a variable called game state in here. It's gonna be a static variable, so public static string game state equals game, and then in our man class, I'm gonna put the game one dot game state equals exit, and right in our update method in our game one class uh, it's gonna say gamepad.getState uh, buttons.back equals equals buttonState.pressed and then it's just gonna say right below that this.exit well you wanna put and or actually or put or game state equals equals uh, exit 
So basically, if we set this game state to exit and it loops around this, it's going to exit the game. So if we die, the game will end. And that's what we want. Okay, so I oops, okay. The enemy isn't hitting us for some reason. So as you can see, our health is going down. Uh, and when it reaches zero, hopefully the game will end. It's taking sort of a long time. Okay, see? So the game just ended, and that's good. So next, uh, I think we're going to make enemy spawners. So this will basically just be, yeah, just like it sounds like an enemy spawner. And actually, I don't think it will be inherit from the object class. So basically what this is going to do is every couple seconds or so, it's going to spawn a new enemy. Okay, there we go. Actually, yeah, yeah, I'll inherit from the object class. It's gonna be object. Just gonna copy and paste its uh, constructor. There we go. Just name it a uh, spawner. Doesn't need a sprite name. It can just be a block for now. It's not gonna be a solid. And there we go. All right. We have to uh, import all the XNA framework stuff. Okay. So after you did that, uh, you want to override the update method. So go public override update. And what you want to actually just get rid of this base update method. And what you want to do is create a couple variables. I uh, want to create a private. Or, no, no, what am I doing? Private int uh, spawn timer and private int spawn time. Okay, and then I'm going to create another method uh, called uh, increment increment timers. Just like in our other class, I forgot which class, but I know in one of our classes we put a method like this. So we're just going to put spawn timer plus plus, and then all, all the timers that we need to increment will be put in this uh, method. So we're just going to put that method in the update method, and we're going to put a statement here. Say if spawn timer is greater than spawn time. Then it's going to spawn an enemy. So it's going to loop through all the enemies for each object O in items. Oops. Items dot object list. It's going to loop through all the enemies and find it. I mean, all the objects and try to find an enemy. So uh, if O dot get type, we have to make sure it is an enemy. So if o dot get type equals type of enemy, then we're going to oh yeah, and we want to make sure it's dead. So and you're not alive. Uh, o dot alive equals equals true. O dot position. Equals, oops, I mean not equals, equals true. O dot position equals position or this position, and that's pretty much all we need. We just have to set its position and make it alive again. So, oh yeah, we also have to make sure that the spawn timer is set back to zero. So spawn timer equals zero. Okay, there we go. Uh, oh yeah, another thing forgot. Instead, another thing we have to do is put a break right inside this if statement. So it doesn't loop through 
all the enemies and spawn them. So, actually, let's go into our items uh, class and go to the initialize method and uh, create a for loop around our enemies. So, for int i equals zero, i has to be smaller than, let's see, how many enemies do we want? Max. Um, 16 enemies. How about that? And i plus plus. Okay. Put that around our enemies. And just set this to. Yeah, 200 is fine. Uh, also, we want to put. Oops. Enemy. Enemy. E equals new enemy. Actually, we can just copy this. And then object dot list dot add e, and then we're going to change things to e, which is the enemy. So e dot alive equals false. So just to make it dead. So this is just like our bullet. So all our enemies are going to be dead by default. And then we're just going to place a uh, enemy spawner. So we're just going to place. Excuse me. A spawner at 200 by 200. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and test that. We're running a little bit late on time, so every guys to set a time. Did I forget to set a time. Yeah, I did. Spawn time equals uh, let's say 120. So or 60, 60 times three. So three every three seconds is going to, is going to spawn. Okay, let's see. Okay, sounds good. One, two, three. It's not spawning. Okay, let's uh debug this. Okay, it's not looking like it's spawning. Okay, good. Spawn timer, 62 spawn time, 180. Okay. There we go. So now let's step through this. Yada yada yada. Okay, couldn't find anything. Well, well, uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate the left a rating, and see you in the next.